Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. Um, today's reflection has very kindly been prepared for us by uh, Dr. Sue Greener, who's a reader here in this benefice. Um, and she's chosen to base her, um, her reflection on our lectionary reading for today from the, book, from the first book of Kings. Um, as you may be aware, the daily readings for morning prayer and evening prayer um, have their own lectionary. So every day there is a set text for, um, from the Old Testament, there's a set text from the New Testament, um, and there's also a psalm of the day. So um, that's the choice that we have. If we want to follow the lectionary, sometimes we deviate from it um, during these morning reflections. But on the days that we follow the lectionary, those are the choices that we have. Um, and today we have the Old Testament reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 4. And I'm going to be reading from verse 29. So if you'd like to uh, follow in your own Bible, um, it's 1 Kings chapter 4, starting at verse 29. Um, and after the, after the prayers today, I'm going to be singing a hymn from our Red Hymn Book. And it's number 786, no, sorry, 486. Um, Christ is the King, O oh, friends rejoice. So 486. That is if you have a red handbook, um, red hymn book to hand. Anyway, um, before we start, let's light our candles. Um, mindful that God is with us and that we gather for this time in the name of Jesus Christ the light of the world. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So our reading from 1 Kings. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight and a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the East and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including Ethan the Ezraite, wiser than Heman, Kalkol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs numbered 1,005. He spoke about plant life, from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of walls, he spoke about animals and birds, reptiles and fish. From all nations, people came to listen to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. When Hiram, king of Tyre, heard that Solomon had been anointed king to succeed his father David, he sent envoys to Solomon because he had always been on friendly terms with David. Solomon sent back this message to Hiram. You know that because of the wars waged against my father David from all sides, he could not build a temple for the name of the Lord his God until the Lord put his enemies under his feet. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side and there's no adversary or disaster. I intend therefore to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God as the Lord told my father David when he said, Your son, whom I will put on the, on the throne in your place, will build the temple for my name. So give orders that cedars of Lebanon be cut for me. 
my men will work with yours, and I will pay you for your men whatever wages you set. You know that we have no one so skilled in felling timber as the Sidonians. When Hiram heard Solomon's message, he was greatly pleased and said, Praise be to the Lord today, for he has given David a wise son to rule over his great nation. So Hiram sent word to Solomon, I have received the message you sent me and will do all you want in providing the cedar and juniper logs. My men will haul them down from Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea and I will float them as rafts by sea to the place you specify. There I will separate them and you can take them away. And you are to grant my wish by providing food for my royal household. In this way, Hiram kept Solomon supplied with all the cedar and juniper logs he wanted. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household, in addition to 20,000 baths of pressed olive oil. Solomon continued to do this for Hiram year after year. The Lord gave Solomon wisdom, just as he had promised him. There were peaceful relations between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. This is the word of the Lord. So to our reflection, prepared for us by Sue Greener. What would we give for the wisdom of Solomon? A king who honoured his father David's wishes, a king who understood the value of friends and allies. Solomon's father David had been given the task of battle, but in Solomon's time the battles were done. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. Solomon doesn't sit back and enjoy his, this time, but sets about building a temple to God to fulfil God's will. This temple will be made of the finest materials, and that includes the finest wood. Our reading tells of the sourcing of this wood from Tyre. Solomon build, builds the trust of the ruler of Lebanon, offering fair trade and acknowledging the effort involved with fair payment. He ensures, he ensures that his people would work with Hiram's people in the cutting and transporting of the timber for the temple. The two rulers work together for peace and acknowledge this by treaty between their nations. We could reflect on what this tells us about current Brexit negotiations, getting people's trust, working out fair reward for effort and enabling nations to work successfully together. What would we give for the wisdom of Solomon on this stage of world affairs? But instead, I'm keen to share a different parallel. Here in Heathfield Benefice, we have long been praying for growth with the prayer, God of Mission. We ask God to send his Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, and power to our witness. The Benefice has seen its time of battles, and we continue to face disruption from the pandemic. But in many ways, this strange time offers us a time of rest. Well, perhaps not our ministry team, but, but certainly a time for reflection, time to consider the temple we should build here in Heathfield. For this, we do not need wood. We have buildings, but we do need cooperation, trust in each other and fairness as we acknowledge the contributions of each parish to our mission. Can our temple acknowledge the needs of those at home unable to attend church through our online sharing of God's word? Can our temple acknowledge the needs of those who do not visit churches but need God's word in action? Can we follow Solomon's example and not rest till we have built it with love and wisdom, fairness and trust. 
So big thank you to Sue for that reflection. We keep that in mind as we now come before God in the time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember the wisdom that you gave to Solomon as you had promised. And we also pray that you give us wisdom. That you help us see what we can do to cooperate, to build trust, to promote fairness. So that we can build your temple here in this local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wider church. We pray for our bishops here in this benefice, bishops Martin, Ruth and Will. And we pray for all those who minister in your church. We pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit. And that you lead us to be witnesses about your love and your saving grace. We also pray for the church worldwide, for our Christian brothers and sisters, especially in those places where there is struggle, for those who are being persecuted, for those who are being discriminated against. Help us all to promote freedom of religion and belief, not only for our own sake, but for those who believe differently as well. And help us remember that we should be supportive of everyone's right to choose freely whether they want to come to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for family, for friendships and acquaintances, for love, friendship and kindness. We pray for those who are suffering at this moment in body, mind or spirit. And for all those who are working so hard to relieve the suffering of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray for those in authority We pray that you give them wisdom the way you gave to Solomon. We pray for our politicians. We pray for local politicians, um, councillors. We pray for MPs, for the government. And we pray that you help them make good decisions. May they always remember that they are serving the people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We gather all these prayers into one as we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm now going to sing hymn number 486, um, which is slightly long. It's seven verses, so I'll sing verse number one, six and seven. Christ is the King, O oh friends rejoice, brothers and sisters with one voice, tell all the world he is your choice. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let love's unconquerable might Your scattered companies unite In service to the Lord of Light Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia So shall God's will on earth be done, new lamps be lit, new tasks begun, and the whole church at last be one. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So thank you very much for joining me now. Um, just a reminder that if you want to join us for our service on Sunday morning, um, please remember to book beforehand. Um, you can get a ticket um, and the booking will open tomorrow morning. So visit the website um, and you'll find a link to book your ticket to the Sunday service. Um, our morning prayers and reflections um, are back on Tuesday and Thursday next week. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention, of course, if you cannot join us on Sunday morning in person, um, do remember we will have something, uh, something posted online. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to at least record the service on Sunday and post it online. We had some technical difficulties with that last week, um, but um, hopefully it'll be all right this week. So please do join us in whichever way you can. So we come to our prayer for God's blessing. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and with all those that we care and pray for evermore. Amen.